Hey y'all, what's happening? This is Seth, the Imperial Riff Lord, signing on again. This is episode 10 of the History of the Guitars. This is my 2008. I've been in this Prestige RG2550 Scotty. I love that Prestige logo. It is just sexy. And uh, this is my workhorse. This is the first Prestige I ever had, and it's one of the best guitars I have had over the years. It's really something. I'm trying to get this dang stand to tilt down a little better, but but uh, either way, you can all y'all can see what's going on with it. And let's get into how I came about this guitar, the specs, what I've used it on, why it's named after who it's named after. So the coolest. I mean, every every guitar has a story, and that's a cool thing because you know it just adds to the love of the instrument and just makes me appreciate them more when I think about you know what they mean to me and just the interesting circumstances that come with you know acquiring them. But uh, so I went to my friend Joe's gig or open jam one time, Joe Feingold, what's up brother, who was also joined by my brother Joe Laskowski, Lagowski, I think it's Laskowski, um, but he knows who I'm talking about, who had the same guitar, but it was white, same exact model, and this is actually 2550Z-GK, which the Z, I think, something to do with the trim on it, and then GK stands for Galaxy Black, that is the finish on it. But I played Joe's, Joe Leskowski's uh, guitar at this jam, and it was the white one. And then, like, the very next day, I went to Joe Feingold's gig at Rex's in Warsaw, Indiana, where he was using that same guitar at a gig. And then the very next day, I found this guitar on Chicago Craigslist. This was back when I was living in Indiana. And this is, uh, like, April 2013, something like that. And... Saw it on Craigslist and asked to do what he wanted cash for it. He gave me a price. I said, I will see you there. Drove a couple hours with my best friend and went and got it and bought it from another guy also named Joe. <laughs> so the three Joes. And the only reason that guy was selling it was because he wanted to buy a very expensive Paul Reed Smith uh, Tremonti model. And the only thing that it needed was a setup at the time. And then... Um, it was my main guitar in Groupies Wanted with Josh and Brittany and Scott. What's up, people? How you doing? Miss you guys. You were awesome. And uh, I was especially excited to get it at the time because, you know, getting a new guitar is always great. But the only two I've been as guitarists that I had were my Gem and my JPM. Kalel. Mr. Caterpillar is the, the Gem. That was in an early episode of this series. And Kalel is the JPM, which I mentioned in episode nine. And those are collectible, very expensive, very hard to replace guitars that I did not want to take into a smoke-filled environment, much less one with a bunch of drunks. And so they were not guitars, nor are they now guitars that I gig with. I don't gig much. I'm looking to change that soon. I am in a project called Badass Beauty. We're working on the set list right now. Heavy, intense in your face. Might as well be metal with like R&B and soul kind of grooves. Really, and funk stuff too. Really great. Uh, what's up, La Quinta? And Ian and Benton and Tyler. <laughs> He's the new guy. So anyway, um, so I started playing with the groupies wanted. The first gig I played it at Rex's. Uh, didn't test it first through my hand, but I knew it was going to be so awesome. The pickups were, of course, I love stupid hot pickups, but it was not uh, the best gig because I spent too much time messing with it. So I learned a valuable lesson, and that was make sure that you test your gear before you have a gig. Just make sure you know what it's going to do, what it won't do. But I got through the night, and then that was my main guitar. Um, it's still my main guitar when I do performances for the most part. I, mean, I got so many damn guitars now, it's insane, but... Uh, but this is the workhorse. I mean, this thing is super versatile. And it's got the five-way switch. It's like a strap. And 
I can do any style practically on this thing at all. It's not just a shred machine, even though it does that exceptionally well. I and mean, that's what a RG is for. It's a gem without all the cosmetic trimmings. And now the monkey grip, the four top scallop, scalloped frets, and uh, doesn't have the lion claw cutaway underneath the trim. And depending on what version of Jim you got, different pickups, and some of the bridges are slightly different. But uh, it's uh, been my main guitar since. And when I moved back to LA in 2014, I can't believe it's been 10 years ago, at the end of April, uh, of course, it was my main guitar in Red Rock, the first band I joined. What's up, Red? And bass player's name. Rich, <laughs> Jamie, and John, RIP to both of you guys. Played six gigs with them. And then uh, later that year, or the next year, 2015, I played it as my main guitar in the Stephen G. Williams band. I miss that dude. What up, sir? You are a stellar individual. Heavy instrumental rock. Uh, only guitarist gig I've had that I was, ex and even though I played a solo on the, on, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the song. I can't remember. Very Pink Floydish. I played a solo on that song on our first gig at the Piano Bar in Hollywood. It's not there anymore. Or it's something else now. But uh, we were the last rock band to play there. And we did three gigs, and that was a great, great gig that I, I miss playing. We keep in touch. And uh, thinking, what else after that? Stephen G. Williams. Played it in Arden and the Wolves. I only played five gigs with them. Took this to Vegas when I played at the Hard Rock Cafe, early 2016. This was in the video that I did with Heavy Justice in 2017 for Macabre Melody and Bone to Dust. Uh, did not play this on the recording, so that was the JPM. But uh, this definitely matched the aesthetic for the video much better. It's not the like the clown type colors. And it's just been uh, the guitar that I use, generally my go-to if I have a show. I've got an audition coming up on the 17th with a cover band, and I'm going to be using it for that. And it's uh, it's one I'm never getting rid of. It's got a lot of history, and it's just it's great. I mean, the, the first, I think I didn't have to unlock the nut to even tune it. It stays in tune so well for something like the first eight gigs that I did. And those are four hour long cover gigs. Um, so yeah, it's definitely uh, got some mileage on it. And it's not flawless like a lot of my other instruments. It's got some chips on it. You know, there's one back there. You can see it real distinctly. And uh, But that's what makes it unique, you know. I'm learning to appreciate things that aren't in pristine condition because it shows somebody loved them and used them all the time. So yeah, we got plenty of time. Okay, so let's get into the specs. So this is a basswood body, rosewood fretboard, maple neck. Looks like it's got, I'm not sure if that's the Wenga stripes or strips, however you say that. I believe it's probably a five piece neck. And then. It's got the Edge Zero trim on it. So these have uh, a system in the back where you can tighten the spring tension with this little wheel here. Now when I got it, it had the, the bar in the back. There's a stop bar that goes underneath here where you can make it to where it doesn't float. So if you break one of your high three strings, you're still reasonably well in tune. That was one thing that attracted me to buying one of these. I used to put trim stabilizers on all my floating bridges. I haven't done that for years. I love floating, floating bridges now. This one floats fully now, but I do have the stop bar. I guess I decided to put it back in there, but it makes it much, much stiffer. Pretty cool piece of ingenuity. Also, the bar doesn't have those bushings on it, like on the below pro edge trims, which are the, the best ones, if you ask me. But there's a clip down inside of here where you just put it in there, and it literally just locks in place. So that's really nice. It's got one master volume, one master tone, five-way switch. This is a DiMarzio Super Distortion. Yes, it's in the neck from the mid-80s. Got that from my brother Drew Zaragoza. Thank you much, brother. Love this pickup. Never coming out of there. This is the stock DiMarzio IBZ, whatever it was in there. And then this is a this is the first DiMarzio pickup I ever bought. 
and I got it installed in my old Strat uh, that I, well, actually it was being installed in the Strat the day I met Steve Vai in 1999, a couple days after the Ultra Zone came out. Um, so, and when I was with Scotty, who this guitar is named after, so when we went to Chicago to see Vi play live at this record shop, I've got pictures, um, we, uh, we, I called in sick, my friend Ryan went with us, what's up dude, and um, we took the back, a couple of seats, the bench seat out of the back of Scott's van, and because there was a raffle for five grand worth of Vi's gear, so if any of us wanted, we were well prepared, I went and met him, got pictures with him, he autographed some stuff, awesome day. And then when I came back to the music shop, they were putting the, this pickup in my Strat. So this is this is DiMarzio Evolution. Um, and the reason why this guitar is named Scotty is because, because it is a workhorse. Um, Scott Workman is a very dear friend of mine. I have known Scott since I was 16. He was my first guitar teacher. And last time I talked to him was just January this year. We don't talk very often, like once a year. And when I come home, I always make sure I have some time to spend with him. It was great when I was home last year in Indiana. I got to see one of his student recitals and hung out with him, drank some beers and hung out with a couple of old friends and just, you know, talked about life and gear and musician stuff. And it's always great to do that because now he's, for a long time, he's been a colleague more than anything. But we've, we've also, we lived together for close to a year. I was in a band with him. Um, so... Yeah, we, we go way, way back. And he's the guy who started me on this whole journey of playing guitar and just showed me the ropes. And I can't say enough good things about him. But he, the dude almost never sleeps. He's pursuing a doctorate in music education now. And uh, just uh, amazing performer, amazing player, amazing person. And uh, he also is the guy who got me into I've been his guitars and DiMarzio pickups. Was, uh, the first time I ever saw him play was on his USA Custom, which is in the first episode of this series, with that guitar, my my Red K guitar. So if, if you have, if y'all been tuning in that long, because that was I don't remember what year we did that. I forget, but um, been a while. But he was in that episode with me because that's where the whole journey started with that too. But. Um, but I couldn't think of a more appropriate person to name this guitar after. Um, it just delivers in spades. I can play jazz on this thing. I can play blues. I can play any form of rock, face melting metal, whatever. It stays in tune wonderfully. And uh, it's just, uh, it is a total shred machine. But um, you know, it'll do a lot more. And, and, I, and these kind of guitars tend to... You know, they're definitely built for that type of playing, but they don't get enough credit for how much else that they are capable of. So as far as anything I don't like about this guitar, I can't think of anything, honestly. I, I, uh, I don't absolutely love the bridge completely. It's, it's functions, it does what it's supposed to do, but it's not a low pro edge. Just nothing can be that but one of those, because that is the best bridge that Ivan has ever made, at least that I've ever had, as far as a Floyd type one. Um, and of course, got the Godo tuners on it. And um, yeah, this is also one of the only pick guard guitars that I have where the pickups are actually attached to the pick guard. Eddie, I think, I'm thinking about all the guitars I have. I'm pretty dang sure Eddie is the only one, other one that has that on it. Because I don't have any strats or any traditional type guitars. Um, and then my gem, Mr. Caterpillar, it's got a pick guard, but it's purely cosmetic. It just sits on top of the body to avoid it getting scratched, which is what a pick guard is generally for. So I'm trying to think of anything else I use this guitar in. Oh, actually, let's actually give a quick sound demo. I'll just kick the gain on. So yeah, I'll just put the. So here's the bridge pickup. <laughs> Thick. Or 
person. Which, of course, is the bridge. Then you got the in-betweens. But I'm almost always on the full neck or the full bridge. I rarely ever use any of the other settings unless I'm playing funk. It's always the one right up from the bridge. Um, and if I'm at church, most of my guitars are too loud to be in the full humbucker mode. So I'll, I'll flip it to the one down from the neck or, or from the bridge. Um, but uh, that is Scotty. Again, in 2008... Ivan is RG 2550ZGK Prestige. And uh, it's been with me since 2013. Giving this guitar a lot of love, and it's going to get plenty more. It's not going anywhere. And uh, very glad to have known Scott as long as I have, and um, just in the ways he's influenced and supported. and been part of my musical journey for so long I mean the guy was right there at the start so uh, and seeing that this is my workhorse and he is the overachiever that he is it was definitely appropriately named so signing off until episode 11 and I'll let you find out what that one is when it airs so peace out if you like what you see in here please tune in and sub hit the subscribe button and we'll see you on the next episode up the irons <laughs>